Lecture 5.4 Applications of Proportions. So now that we've chatted about proportions a little bit, let's start actually and apply it to the real world around us. So if you have ever considered, maybe you even know somebody who collects model trains, different manufacturers actually use different size model trains. And each of these sizes are called a scale that's related to the actual size of the real train. For example, an HO scale model has a ratio of 1 to 87, meaning that the model is 187th of the size of a full train. So I just want to take a little bit of time to actually go through and see the same type of object, like a model train, might have a different scale, a different ratio, a different proportion to the actual train. So the LGB scale is 1 to 20, <clears throat> 22.5. As a fraction, you can see it's 1 over 22.5. The number 1 scale is 1 to 32. The O scale is 1 to 33, uh, 43.5. The S scale is 1 to 64. The HO scale is 1 to 78. The TT scale is 1 to 120. So that means that train is 1 20th of the size of a real train. So you can see each of these scales, they get smaller, 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 according to the real, uh, as a proportion of the real train. So how would we use something like this? Well, what if we have the HO scale and it's a little boxcar and it's five inches long? So let's see what five inches looks like. So let's see, this is five inches. So I know on your screen it's not going to be exactly five inches, but here's five inches. There you go. Here is five inches. Now, how would how large would it be for an HO scale? Well, we can use what we know about proportions to figure out how large would the actual box car be. So how I would set up the problem is we have a scale model, an HO scale is five inches long. So we know it's five inches. We don't know how large the real size of the train is, but we do know the scale is one to 87. So on the HO scale, it's one to 87, so 187. I'm gonna use what I know in proportions to crop to multiply my extremes and my means. So my x will equal 35 carried 5, 43, 435 inches long should be a real box car. And if we think about it, if we divide that by 12, uh, I'm just going to round up, round down to, well, let's see, 12 goes into nearly four times, so it is about 35 feet. That's how long a box, an actual boxcar would be. The actual inches, 435 inches in feet, that's approximately 35 feet, and that makes sense. You always do want to look at your result and see if it makes sense. So when can I use what I know about proportions? Well, let's take a few examples. Let's say a woman drives her car 270 miles in six hours. If she continues that same rate of speed, how far will she travel in 10 hours? So in, she traveled 270 miles in six hours. How far will she travel? We don't know x miles, we'll just say, in 10 hours. Okay. So let's use what we know about proportions to solve this problem. I'm going to multiply my extremes, multiply my means. So that's going to be 270 times 10 is 2700. 6 times x is 6x. Now I'm going to divide each side by 6. So now I have 6 goes into 2,700. 4 times 24, 30. Let's bring down the 
times zero. Six goes into 30 five times. Bring down the zero. Six goes into zero times. So we expect that she will drive in 10 hours a total of 450 miles. And again, you want to take a look at it and see if it makes sense. Well, in six hours she traveled nearly 300 miles, so in 10 hours she better travel over 300 miles, and yes she does, she travels 450 miles. So let's take another example. A baseball player gets eight hits in the first 18 games of the season. If he continues at the same rate, how many hits should he get in 45 games? So he gets eight hits in 18 games. How many hits, we don't know, so that's our X, will he get in 45 games? Okay. Let's use our math fundamental proportioned um, principle to solve for our x. So we have 8 times 45 will equal 18 times x. Well, 8 times 45 is going to be 360 equals 18x. Let's divide each side by 18. 18 goes into 30 six twice. So 18 goes into 360 20 times. So we know that x equals 20 and therefore the baseball player should get 20 hits in 45 games. So now let's take another problem and although this deals with a particular solution that you may find in chemistry Think about all the places where you need ratio of one subject, sub, substance to another substance, like in baking. If I want to bake a cake, I need a ratio of, let's say, three tablespoons of baking soda to four cups of flour. But if I want actually five cups of flour, how much tablespoons of baking soda would I need? I can set up the problem just like this to solve that. So it's not just this problem. You can apply this to lots of things out there in the real world. And I want you to start thinking about the things that you can apply it to. So let's get back to this problem that's in hand. So we have a solution that contains four milliliters of alcohol and 20 milliliters of water. If we need another solution that's to have the same ratio of milliliters of alcohol to milliliters of water, but it must contain 25 milliliters of water, how much alcohol should it contain? So I'm going to set this up of 4 milliliters of alcohol to 20 milliliters of water. And I need to know how many milliliters of alcohol will I need for 25 milliliters of water. I'm going to use my cross multiplication or my extremes and means to be able to solve for x. So 4 times 25 should equal 20 times x. Well, 4 times 25 is 100 this equals 20x. I should divide each side by 20. So how many times 20 go into 100? five times. So therefore, I should need five milliliters of alcohol. Have you ever had to read a map and there's a little legend that says how long um, an inch or whatever. There's a legend down there that says how long an inch is in miles. So let's say we have a map and it is scaled that one inch on the map is the actual distance of 85 miles. So if two cities are 3.5 inches apart, 
what is the actual distance that they are um, in the real world. So let's say that one inch on the map corresponds to 85 miles in the real world. So if I need 3.5, and I've measured 3.5 inches for the two cities, how far is it in the real miles? Again, I'm going to use my extremes. Should The product of my extremes should equal the product of my means. So 1 times x is x, 85 times 3.5. I've got to do that math off to the side here. So 85, 3.5, it's going to be 5, 2, 40. Two, fifteen, twenty-five, five, seven, nine, two. So x will equal two hundred ninety-seven and a half miles. The setup should be getting a little bit easier as to what do you pull in where. So again, I use my one inch to what it is, that's my first ratio, 1 to 85. And then I knew it's 3 inches, but to what? That's what I'm looking for, so that's going to be my X. On the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration website, they have a slogan, and it says, Stop the Tech, Stop the Wrecks. And according to their website, 3 out of 5 drivers use their cell phone while driving. So, let's say I took a break at a rest stop off the Highway 101, and I counted 95 cars passing. They were passing in both directions in one minute. How many of the 95 cars should I expect that they were using cell phones? Now, I need to take the original ratio. The original ratio was 3 to 5. The whole is the 5. Those are, quote unquote, all the drivers, and out of all the drivers, three of them were talking on, on the phone or using their cell phone. Now, in my situation, I had a total of 95 cars, and I don't know how many were using their cell phone, but I'm going to predict how, much, how many were using their cell phone. So, 3 times 95. 95 should equal 5x. 3 times 95 is 285. And all I need to do is divide each side by 5. And I will have 5 and 35 is 57 cars should be using their phone, or I would expect 57 cars or the car's drivers using their phone. So think about all the things that you can do in the outside world to use what you know now in math. So until next time, be seeing you.